Hi, welcome to Troubadour's videos. Today we're going to be checking out EVGA's latest killer card, the GTX 285 SSC. Here's EVGA's new killer card that's just come out on the market. This is the GeForce GTX 285 SSC edition or super clocked edition. Let's have a look inside the box and see what comes with this card. We have the usual information bundle. In here we have a graphics card install guide, driver CD, case decal, and it looks like a quick start guide. SP diff audio cable informational flyer to get 10% off applications from the endzone.com site two power adapters HDMI and a VGA adapter let's take a closer look at the card here it is the GTX 285 from EVGA looks exactly like the GTX 280 from the outside except when you turn it over doesn't have the backing plate and the heat sink that the GTX 280 had. Here are our SLI connectors here for three-way SLI and one other thing you'll notice on the back of this particular card we're running two six-pin power connectors as opposed to the previous six-pin and eight-pin that was on the GTX 280's. So let's run the GTX 285 SSC through a couple of benchmarks and see exactly what this new graphics card is capable of. These are the settings we're going to be using on the Far Cry 2 benchmark today. Display resolution 1920 by 1200 and the aliasing none on the first run but 8x on the second run. Performance everything to very high. Rendering quality everything set to ultra high, very high or the highest possible setting available. I must admit these are astonishing results coming from a single GPU. With no anti-aliasing engaged we have a minimum of 47.6 frames per second, average of 58.6 and a max of 78.4. And again, superb results coming off this graphics card. This is one single GPU with 8x anti-aliasing, minimum frame rate of 31, average of 42 and a max of 61 frames a second. Let's check out the Crisis benchmark. As you know, no real benchmark would be complete without having Crisis thrown in there, especially one of the NVIDIA cards. Everybody knows this benchmark, so I'm not going to run the full cycle on it. So here we go, and let's check out the results. With everything set to very high, 1920 by 1080 resolution, with no anti-aliasing on this run, let's see what we get. 20 frames a second minimum, Maximum of 34.14 and an overall average of 27.5. Once again with 8x anti-aliasing engaged, everything set to very high, 1920 by 1080 resolution, let's see what we get. Minimum 14.5, maximum 27.8 and an overall average of 22.5. Once again very reasonable scores coming off this card. Let's check out the Crisis Warhead benchmark. Everything set to enthusiast mode, 1920 by 1200 resolution, no anti-aliasing, and we get a minimum of 19, maximum of 40, and an overall average of 29.03 frames per second. Let's check out with 8x anti-aliasing engaged, once again enthusiast mode, 1920 1200. Whoa, again, very reasonable scores. Minimum of 16.3, max of 43.7, 
Overall average, 29.7 fantastic results coming from this single GPU. 3D Mark Vantage is an awesome tool for benchmarking your CPU and your GPU. It's very reliable and consistent with its results, as well as quickly becoming an industry standard. So let's check out the results we get from this benchmark. Whoa, 15,669 performance points or 12,807 GPU scores. Let's check out the extreme score. 6,477 extreme points or 6,194 GPU scores. Not bad results again coming off this single GPU. Just to see if there's been any performance increase on the GTX 285, we're going to compare it to a GTX 280 with a water block. We're going to overclock it to the same frequencies as the 285 and see how the results come out. During the Vantage benchmarking of both these cards, we recorded the power consumption, but look how close these cards run together. Absolutely phenomenal, almost mimicking each other with the power consumption. Check out the scores from the Far Cry 2 benchmark, the GTX 280 overclocked and the GTX 285 are running neck and neck with 8x anti-aliasing engaged. Slightly different story otherwise with no anti-aliasing, the GTX 280 does fall by 2 frames a second. On the Crisis benchmark, the GTX 280 falls just 1 frame shy across the board. Once again on the Crisis Warhead benchmark, exactly the same story, just one frame shy. Now this is where the fun comes in. Look at the difference between that GTX 280 and the GTX 285 Super Clock. Small, small, tiny difference between those two cards. Absolutely phenomenal. Exactly the same story again with the 3D Mark Vantage. Extreme benchmark, GTX 280 overclocked and the GTX 285 Super Clocked. Minimal difference, very, very minute margin between these two graphics cards. EVGA's GTX 285 SSC or Superclocked Edition is a phenomenal graphics card, is more than capable of maxing out most games at reasonable frame rates. However, is it worth upgrading to this latest and greatest blazing graphics card? Well, if you already own a GTX 280, simply overclock it and it is possible to match the performance. However, if you have some of the older graphics cards, like the 8800 series and 9800 series, upgrade into the GTX 285 is going to absolutely blow your socks off. Once again, I hope this video has helped you. If you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest in gaming and PC hardware, feel free to subscribe.